Let's play a game of names. So if I mention Toyota, what do you say? Reliability, right? What if I say Isuzu? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Hmm. Trucks? Well, yes, you're right. And one more thing would be the Isuzu Crosswind, which we all grew up with together with the Toyota Tamaro FX. But today, since we have all those Euro 4 compliance that we need, now we have this. The 2018 Isuzu MUX. Now this is almost the top of the line trim. This is the 4x2. So this is one of the highest, if not the highest 4x2 version. There's also a 4x4, but that costs way more, which doesn't make sense for a car like this. Anyway, today I'm going to show you around this car and I'm also going to give it a test drive. So stay tuned. Before we start today's video, I'd like to give a warm shout out to ZeroStainAutomotive.com. ZeroStainAutomotive.com is a website that sells car parts and accessories here in the Philippines. They were kind enough to send me this one here today, the Pegasus Lights Attack V2 LED Headlights. Now this is going to be fitted to my LC90 Prado. I'm going to show you the stock versus this one later on towards the end of this video. So stick around for that. Let's start with the exterior of the MUX or MUX as Isuzu would call it. So on the outside, it's not very bold. It's definitely not a bold design. It's more conservative because after all, this car is supposedly catered towards a more conservative buyer. So it's a far cry from the likes of Fortuners or even Everest or maybe even the Montero. So now here, what I love about this is this chrome grille all over it, and it's pretty big too. The Isuzu badge is also finally big. For a number of years, they were incredibly tiny with like the crosswind. And here you get these uh, LED DRLs. They're okay. Again, they're very conservatively designed. And as you move on over to the side, the shape of the car is, uh, I mean, if you say SUV, this is pretty much what you get. You get 18 inch rims right here, which also look very conservative. They're not that bold either. You get the nice big uh, side mirror. It's not as big as the Everest because as I noted, the Everest is probably the car with one of the biggest side mirrors I've ever seen. And here, this was supposedly chrome, but the owner like put these uh, black trim on it so that it's not too chrome and 90s looking. So this door right here, uh, this is the odd part for me because if you open it, there's just a huge overhang right here, which it's, it's really weird for me. But yeah, then the back too, it's really short. It's a bit unproportional from the front. Uh, that's, that's the only gripe I have about this car. At the back, same thing as the sides in the front. So the styling is more of a minimalist conservative design. If you notice up here, there's a sticker for ESC, electronic stability control, because this car along with that has traction control. And you can only get that with, the, uh, with this trim level, the LSA 3.0 Blue Power. Now, if you open this up, uh, there's no power tailgate. There's a version of this car, the LSA Lux, which includes a power tailgate and it's also painted in some spinal red color, but you have to add 100,000 pesos more for that, which doesn't make sense for me. Now back here, uh, the space, it's decent, I guess, with the seats folded up, but if you fold it down, it is pretty big and it folds, uh, well, almost flat, but although it folds flat, the issue here is that there is this like really high load lip. So I'm not quite sure if I would prefer this over the Fortuner folding to the side, but overall the Everest still wins when it comes to like usable cargo space here at the back. Now, as you close this one up, one last thing I have to point out is uh, this badge right here. So 20th anniversary of Isuzu, 2018 year. When the MUX first came out in the Philippines, you had the choice of the 2.5 liter or the 3 liter engine, which produces way less power than this. But for this one, this 2018 model, you get this, uh, 3 liter blue power diesel engine from Isuzu. So since it is an Isuzu engine, you're pretty sure that it is bulletproof. This one produces 176 horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque. Plenty powerful for a car of this size, although there are other cars in this class which produce just a little bit more power. Euro 4 compliant as well. Here inside the MUX, for us to check the third of the door. Sounds, I think the closest is similar to is the Hyundai Siren to start it up, so you do get push button start. Fires right up like that, and the gauges do move with it as you start it as well. And it has had the classic Isuzu diesel rumble, although it's obviously noticeably more quiet than the Isuzu Crossman. So, in here, the materials, um, they're a bit on the lower end of the spectrum as compared to, let's say, the Fortuner, the Everest, or the Montero. So, for example, up here, it's all hard touch plastic. Same thing here on the sides down here in the center as well. The only soft touch you get here is this one right here, which is like really soft leather. Here on the side, you get really soft leather as well where your arm will touch. Then finally, this uh, armrest right here, that's also nice soft leather. 
The steering wheel, while it is nicely sized, it's similarly sized to the Fortuner, it doesn't have the notches for your hand at the 10 and 2 position. So, uh, I mean, that's not really a big thing. It's multi-function as well. You get an Isuzu badge and you get the cruise control, which is mounted here on the steering wheel itself, just like the Everest instead of like Toyota where it's down here at the side. Now, what I like about the steering wheel for this price point, you can uh, tilt the steering wheel, although unfortunately you cannot telescope it. For your gauge cluster, it's very basic. So it's, it's something like uh, from the late 2000s. You get a trip computer and a rather low resolution display, but the way you change that trip computer uh, menus, it's, it's kind of weird. It's up here at the stock, at the wiper stock. So that's the first time I've ever seen any car with the trip computer selected here at the stock. Now here at the center, you get this uh, big infotainment screen. And if you put this in reverse, uh, it'll also double as a reverse camera. It is very big. It is very clear as well. However, unlike the Everest, it doesn't swivel. Now you get probably the biggest knob for the uh, climate control that I've ever seen in any car. It's just ridiculously big. Move on down and you get two USB ports. But the one on the right, that's for your regular charging. The one on the left is actually connected to this head unit and the one at the back. So you can watch your Kyle Leon car reviews, your most favorite Kyle Leon car reviews video in this car as you drive along. Now you get another 12 volt outlet in there. Open this one up and you get another 12 volt there. Then finally down here, uh, you also get this small uh, glove box, which is really small for this car's size. Now going back here in the center, your shift knob, it's oversized. It's similar to like the Pajero. So put, bring it down and to the right, you get manual shifting. It is surrounded by piano black. While it looks amazing, the problem with these piano blacks is that not only are they dust magnets, but they're also fingerprint magnets. So that's just something to look out for. Moving down here, you get your uh, handbrake, which is entirely made out of plastic. So it does feel a little bit cheap. There's no leather boot or anything surrounding it. To its side, you get two cup holders. And if you open this up, you also get this nice deep cubby. This is really good. Moving on over to the side on the left side. So I get this uh, cup holder, which is very similar to the Fortune because when you open it, it's a regular cup holder, but then if you push it inside, it becomes a cubby. Very interesting. Now below that, you get your uh, folding power mirrors. I mean, that is to be expected at this price point, but it's just good to have it even though it's an Isuzu. I expected them to be more practical and wouldn't put things that could break, but yeah, I do appreciate the gesture Isuzu. Now just below that switch, you get another cubby, a small cubby, it's hidden, and another one under the steering wheel. But it's just small enough so you can probably put like the magazine of your gun while you put your pistol in here interesting now just beside the side mirror adjustment switches you also get hill descent control but while in most cars after you're engaging the hill descent control you can just select a speed by like changing the uh cruise control settings but for this one it's just a fixed speed as far as i know comment down below if i am wrong now finally the seats the seats in this car it's a mix of synthetic and real leather so here in the middle, I think that that is a synthetic leather. Then around it is a real leather. It's uh, very good. And the thigh support is definitely way better than Fortune. The Fortune does give me a little bit of back aches because of the thigh support. And it is six-way power adjustable for the driver's side. Unfortunately, there is no lumbar support. And on the passenger side, uh, it's only manual adjustable seats. Here at the second row, let's check the thud of the door. And yeah, the, the length, the overhang of the door really does help a little bit with the door thud, so it makes it sound a little bit better. So back here, the legroom is great. It's quite similar to a Fortune or even an Everest, although there is not much of a recess for extra legroom. So you get map pockets, you get this uh, hook right here, just like the Fortune as well. But it's, I love how it's like a bit higher because in the Fortune, this one, this hook, is mounted down here. So if you have like longer plastic bags, it tends to be useless. But this one, I like the positioning. Now open this one up and this is your toy right here. So you get a nice comfortable armrest, which is also nicely padded and you get two cup holders. Now finally, uh, the most interesting piece here at the back. It's a bit, uh, reminds me of a late 2000s car again. It's kind of an old design, but at least you get a screen right here and it takes a while to boot, but it'll mirror the thing at the front. Okay, now close that one back up. You also get AC controls back here, but there's no climate control. Then now the seats, hmm, the seats. They're definitely way more comfortable than even an Everest and a Fortuner. Thigh support, just like the front, is really good. The seats, however, they don't slide forward and backwards, but they do at least recline like that though. And they recline in a really good angle. 
that's more than the Fortuner. Because the thing about the Fortuner is that the back, when you have the seats folded up, you have limited recline space. But for this one, since the seats fold to the ground, you get nice, nice recline. You can sleep here and enjoy your car ride. Standing in your third row, it's definitely a way better experience than entering a Fortuner or an Everest. So the entry space is bigger. Now folding this one back up just for you to see how much legroom I have back here. And I must say, I have around the, that much legroom, which is not bad. That's definitely the best in its class. Now I have to fold this one so you can see me. And here at the back, while the legroom is great for the third row, and while headroom is actually quite decent, even if you're five, six, you're gonna fit in here. The only issue here is that in the Fortuner and Everest, you can kind of uh, squeeze three people back here if you have to. It's, it's a tight squeeze, but you can. But for this one, you get like this uh, cubby here in the middle in your uh, seat belt buckle. So there's just no way that there's gonna be a, a, yeah, it's poking my bottom side right there. So there's no way that anyone's going to be able to sit here in the middle. It reminds me of like the uh, previous generation Ford Explorer. Yeah, that's, that's kind of sad. So this is strictly a seven seater. Now, what's good about this one is you also get your own air vents at the back. And you even get a grab handle for when your driver drives a bit stupidly. You also get cup holders and more cubbies here at the side. Driving the 2018 Suzu MUX. MUX. So the first impressions when I started driving this car is just, uh, it blew my mind on how soft it is. Like I expected an Isuzu to ride really harshly. I mean, they, they make trucks after all and the crosswind itself, which we all grew up with, that one was rather harsh. But this one, even when you compare it to like the Fortuner or even the Everest, which I, I've been praising a lot, this car is just so much more soft. In fact, this, this is now riding on 32 PSI, I believe, and they are on 18 inch rims. The Fortuner, uh, I think I only put like 30 or 28 PSI in that and yet it rides way more harsh than this. Now, the only gripe I have with this car is the visibility. So for your eight pillars, you have around an entire foot, like 12 inches worth of space that you absolutely cannot see anything out of. I don't know why Isuzu had to make them that thick or maybe that was a General Motors design because fun fact, this car is basically the chevrolet trailblazer so they co-developed this car together with general motors to develop this so the trailblazer is uh, just the same uh, a different engine it has a way more powerful engine with over 200 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque versus this one's like just 170 plus and 380 but i, I mean that engine right here this uh, three liter blue power engine it's definitely a step up from its uh, predecessor. So before this, there was a 2.5 and the three as mentioned before. That one only does like, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 horsepower less than this. Then you can also get like the base model version of this car. Uh, that one has a 1.9 liter engine, which doesn't sound like a lot because it isn't. That only has around 140 something horsepower. So I think this is uh, the optimum choice. Just make sure you get this exact variant, the 4x2 variant, because at least when brand new, the 4x4 variant costs 300,000 pesos more. Would you pay 300,000 pesos more for a car that's exactly the same? Sure, it has like 4x4, but how many percentage of MUX owners would actually take their cars off-road? And especially Manila, it's not like we get snow here that you're gonna need 4x4, so that, that variant's utterly useless for me. Now this car, the power, uh, it's more than enough. It has roughly the same amount of power as a Fortuner and definitely way more power than Everest while still delivering the amount of smoothness that the Everest delivers. So the transmission in this car, this has a six speed auto and it's just so smooth, gear shifts are very crisp. Now here on this uh, bumpy road, again, it's, it's riding way softer than a Fortuner. Anyway, getting back to the engine. So the engine, uh, it's just, uh, hmm, what's the best way to describe this engine? A smooth diesel. I think that's the best term for this engine because I didn't really expect Isuzu engines to deliver this amount of smoothness. Maybe if this was the uh, General Motors version, then yes, I would expect this amount of smoothness for the Trailblazer. But for this one, it's really a pleasant surprise. Gone are the days that Isuzu were making those uh, old turbocharged Suzu Crosswind engines. It's just gone. I remember growing up with that, it was just like, it groans a lot, but it doesn't deliver that much power. But for this one, you just floor it and, 
Okay, there is that torque. Uh, it doesn't have the same amount of torque pull that you'd feel with the Fortuner, but one more time. Yeah, that, that's actually a not bad engine, and it's not that loud as well. That's what I really love about this car. So I wasn't able to take this car to the highway, but I did ask the owner and he said, as long as you're doing it around 80 to 100, you're about fine, anything more than that. And you're gonna get way more diesel rumble. And of course it doesn't have what the Everest has, which is the uh, active noise canceling thing. So yeah, I would expect a car of this segment to be quite loud at highway speeds. But here in the city, it's perfectly daily drivable. If you want, a Fortuner, but maybe it's a bit too flashy for you. The newest Fortuner, after all, is a bit too flashy. And you want something more conservative. You want something more dependable. You want something, you want a diesel engine, a diesel engine powered car that can just go miles and miles without giving you headaches. Then I think the Suzu MUX is for you. Now, finally, I just want to talk about the uh, consumption. So the consumption I'm having right now is around 8.6 kilometers per liter, which is definitely way better than the Fortuner. The Fortuner I daily drive only returns around like 6.8 to at most 7.1, 7.2. So getting that extra one and a half kilometers per liter more is definitely a huge improvement. Brand new, this 4x2 version costs around 1.7 million pesos. And today you can get the 2018 model used for around somewhere between 1 million and 1.2 million, which if you compute it, that depreciation rate is not bad. The Suzu's do definitely hold up their values really well. However, if you're in the market for one of these, I suggest that you hold out just a little bit more because the new uh, D-Max and the new MUX is set to come out soon. And apparently that one has like, center airbags which sounds really amazing i haven't heard that in any car but yeah once that does come out the uh, chances are the price of this model will drop so just hold that just a little bit more but should you really want to get one i think that value proposition is not bad at 1 to 1.2 million pesos if you're tired of having like that base model car look and you want a cheap upgrade for less than what 2000 pesos and you don't want to pay for like top trim but you want the car to look like it's top trim, then get a pair of these LED headlights. All right, so now we're gonna test out the Pegasus Lights Attack V2 from zerostainautomotive.com. So I'm first gonna show you the before, and as you can see, this is the stock headlight. So the stock headlights on the LC90 Prado, they're just uh, your regular headlights, and they're also, well, yellow. But as you can see, uh, they don't do a very good job of anything so it's just you know yellow all the way it's not exactly great inside the car this is with the stock headlights and it's off right now but then we turn it on and uh i mean they do work uh, this is low beam this is high beam but it's still relatively dark do note though that i am using super super dark tint all right so now we've got the pegasus lights attack v2 led headlights hooked up and i think uh enough said just look at how much uh, brighter and clearer i look now so if we just uh, look on here, look at how white that is. It's so nice. So now the only issue with these uh, really white headlights is that if there's a lot of fog, which uh, honestly we don't have in the Philippines, except if you're in like Baguio, then white won't exactly cut it. But not to worry because Zero Scene Automotive also sells these lights in uh, not only tri-color, but also in uh, yellow to cut the fog really well. Now inside the car, I'm not sure if the camera can pick up the difference because I think it auto adjusts the ISO based on the lighting conditions. But at least from my point of view, it just looks so much brighter. I mean, this is uh, low beam, this is high beam. Just look at the distance it can travel as well. Okay, let's turn it off. That's how dark it is. And then we turn it on, boom, look at that. So it's just so good. These uh, LED headlights are definitely a hundred percent five stars for me so do check them out at zerostainautomotive.com and pick up a set for yourself if you like this video please don't forget to smash a like button for the youtube algorithm and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more car reviews